Bitcoin is getting banned again. Man, when are these countries going to learn you can't ban Bitcoin? Can you guys just stop it already? You're ridiculous. You're ridiculous. You look silly. Well, apparently over in India, the politicians there are starting to have the rumblings of the 10th crypto ban in India. So I'll break that story down for you today. Also some big news out of Turkey where their fiat currency has entered into a terminal decline. Also El Salvador has some big words for the USA. And of course, metaverse tokens are going freaking crazy. So I'll talk about that as well in today's video. My name is Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. So if that's a topic you'd like to learn some more about, maybe just stay up to date with, and you should definitely subscribe to the Lark Davis channel. Also, if you can take a quick second and tap on the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm, that would be massively awesome. And of course, anybody who'd like to receive a notification when I put out a new video should click on the notification bell. By the way, if you are a cryptocurrency trader, then you need to get yourself an account over on Femex. It is the best exchange for longing and shorting a wide variety of different cryptocurrencies. You can long and short Bitcoin, Ethereum, hot metaverse coins like Decentraland, Solana, and Avalanche, all kinds of stuff over here for you to trade. Use the link down below in the description to start your account and you're going to get 10% off of your trading fees and $100 in sign up bonuses as well as being eligible for a $3,500 deposit bonus, which is absolutely massive. That is a limited time offer. So use the link down below in the description if you do want to start trading over there on Femex. Now, let's talk about the price of Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been pretty quiet recently. We've seen altcoins going absolutely insane, which we're going to talk about here in just a minute. But just real quick, what's going on with Bitcoin? We could still see our W pattern coming into play here which would be our double bottom. Again, we need to see the price of Bitcoin confirming above $60,000 to really say that's happening. The more this extends out though, the less that pattern becomes valid when we start talking about other things. So we may actually miss our W breakout. Has not confirmed, obviously, we need to see a candle close above $60,000 sooner than later to really count that as a, a valid um, pattern here. Now, what I really want to see Bitcoin doing is breaking above this line right here. So that is our uh, diagonal resistance line coming down here. You can see we would actually have to come up to around $60,000, which is also, of course, a very, very, very key area of price resistance. So not only do we have this resistance here, we also have this resistance here for that $60,000 area. So we could see something like this coming back up to 60, coming back down to test one or both of these areas of support before finally getting enough momentum to, to break out and go beyond this, which is our key bull bear line that is our current front line in the battle between the bulls and the bears now it's not to say that below that is bearish the market's not bearish at the moment in fact the market's been very very bullish recently bitcoin's only you know, 15 percent down from the all-time highs or something still up 200 percent this year by the way by the way so what i would like to see is some kind of scenario like that happening there um, once we get above $61,000, obviously then we can start talking about cracking on to some new all-time highs. But you can see this is a very, very important area of price support and resistance. It didn't actually offer us very much price support in the past, actually. But um, it has offered a lot of price resistance. And there's, of course, a lot of uh, confluence with a lot of um, price action and price history of, of Bitcoin changing hands going on in that area. Now, does that mean we can't come back down still to test 53K? Well, we can always hope. We can always hope. 53K would be beautiful. Be a beautiful time. Come on, Bitcoin. Give us give us one just big old kind of candle, man. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Stack up some BTC there. But I'm feeling like that could be a more likely scenario what I've spelled out here. But we'll see how it plays out over the next few days. Now, this, of course short-term price action, you have to look at what's actually going on on chain, the big picture of what's going on in the market, because you realize in that situation that all of the price noise we're seeing right now, it's just a period of reaccumulation. We had a big run up, price coming down, it gives people a chance to reaccumulate Bitcoin getting ready for the next move up. 
What do we see happening on chain? We see the number of non-zero addresses for Bitcoin hitting a new all-time high. Now, the previous time we had an all-time high was back in April when we hit the all-time high price. So it's very interesting to see because the everything we're seeing right now is telling us that $69,000 was not the top. So we're seeing a reaccumulation period happening right now. So after the previous all-time high at, earlier in the month, people are again reaccumulating Bitcoin, pushing the number of non-zero addresses to a new all-time high, meaning a lot of retail involvement. Yes, there's whales, big accounts, sharks, all kinds of different aquatic animals accumulating Bitcoin out there. So this is, of course, very different behavior compared to what we saw back in 2017, for example. We had this beautiful, massive run-up peak, massive, incredible drop-off, very quick, very dramatic. This bear trend that we had earlier in the year, June, July, we didn't see any kind of a sell-off in, in, in terms of the amount of addresses, the amount of people just getting out of the market. People held, a lot of people held through that. And yes, there was a lot of selling, we talked about that. But now here we are again, People are buying, pushing it up, which is very, very awesome to see. But of course, the real story over the last few days has been the metaverse or just altcoins in general. Bitcoin has been boring. Old man Bitcoin taking a snooze after, after getting up to 69K. Time to take a nap. The altcoin scene has been insane. Crypto.com went absolutely nuts. Those staking rewards, uh, sorry, the staking rewards, cash back rewards for using the card. I checked in my wallet today. It's like, wow, that's substantial now. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so that was nice to see, obviously. Um, the Sandbox, big metaverse play. Decentraland, big metaverse play. You can see both these coins have been getting a lot of attention. Engine's a big gaming coin. We're seeing a lot of layer one and layer two stuff kicking off as well. Immutable X, Loop Ring, that's your layer two technology. So really all of this stuff here, it's layer one stuff or gaming stuff or layer two, which is of course support for layer one. Uh, we have Curve DAO token, big DeFi player, kind of standing out here, but wowzers, man. The uh, metaverse gaming stuff has just been going absolutely insane. And as I mentioned in yesterday's video, the cryptocurrencies that I'm buying right now, very, very bullish on crypto gaming stuff, on crypto metaverse stuff. You can buy the games, you can buy the metaverse coins, you can buy the guild tokens. There's a lot of guild tokens coming out. I'm going to have to do a, just a separate video on that because there's some really cool guild tokens coming out. And they're a very interesting way to get involved in the crypto gaming space. But that's a topic for another day. But uh, wow, it's been absolutely nuts. Just look at all these, these altcoins going insane, which of course just brings back the obvious reminder that in this market, if you want to make the big gains, you got to get the altcoins, man. Simple as that. Altcoins are where the money is made. Bitcoin is how you keep the gains when you get them. That is what I tend to do. Make money in the fast moving alts. Take that higher risk money, move it into lower risk plays like Bitcoin. It's worked out pretty well so far. Now, let's talk about this whole India's banning crypto again thing. So, long story short, India is not banning cryptocurrencies, but they could be banning cryptocurrency payments. Very different thing. Very different thing. But uh, the, the main thing is that the wording in the bill is about private cryptocurrencies. So they're working on some legislation right now that is going to bring the central bank digital currency to India. So the e rupiah, right? So essentially what the Indian government doesn't want to see is to see people using Bitcoin or Polygon or USDC or any of this stuff to do payments in. So they don't want payments. That seems to be what the current conversation is about. And that's not a new conversation. Obviously, this is like the 10th time that the media has reported that India is banning crypto. And look, India is a massive, massive economy. We don't want to see a negative cryptocurrency legislation coming out in India. 
But I don't think that this cryptocurrency legislation is going to be all that bad. If it is just about banning payments, it's not ideal, honestly. I want payments for cryptocurrencies too, obviously. It's just ridiculous banning payments. But I understand these guys have no idea how to how to uh, track for taxes and stuff like this. And they just, if they don't understand it, they want to ban it, which is silly. And of course, they want the power to remain with the state and the power of money to remain with the state in terms of payments for different goods. They don't want uh, black markets where people are paying, not using the government uh, currency. Uh, they want, of course, also it for to be really difficult for people to get their money out of India, take it offshore. Some people are avoiding taxes. Some people just want to do basic things. Either way, this is what the governments are really focused in on. And banning payments is part of that picture. We've seen other countries ban payments too. And you know what happens when a country bans cryptocurrency payments? Not very much, because banning payments, it doesn't stop peer-to-peer -peer payments. The technology is still there. Anybody who has an internet connection can do it. Now, what it does stop is like big companies uh, being able to do this. So if you go into maybe a small restaurant or something or you want to pay your friend, you can still do that in cryptocurrencies. But you're not going to be able to go to like a big restaurant chain or a big hotel chain or a big movie theater chain. They're not going to be able to do cryptocurrency payments because, of course, they're too high profile. They wouldn't be able to get away with it. So not excited about payment bans. But the most important thing to realize here is that this new cryptocurrency bill that they're talking about has not been passed, one. And two, it's not banning cryptocurrencies as an asset class. So... India, uh, Indian investors have been a massive, massive part of the investment scene in crypto. I mean, it's one of the world's uh, biggest, most populous uh, countries with the biggest economies in the world. It's kind of a big deal, kind of a big deal, India. So we are seeing, most importantly, that Indians will still be able to buy Bitcoin, hold Bitcoin, buy Ethereum, hold Ethereum, invest in a range of different altcoins. You want some Metaverse coins? You can buy those. You want to get some dog coins? You got it. Whatever your fancy is, they're not banning the asset class, so it's still an investable asset. If the bill passes as it is currently being discussed, we would just see a either heavy restriction on or ban on payments, which again, not awesome, but uh, really not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things, to be honest. Now, let's talk about Turkey. Turkey, ah, oh, man, just, you know, we've talked about Turkey a lot because they're one of the basket cases in terms of fiat currencies. So here we are again. It's always the same countries, Turkey, Lebanon, you know, Argentina, et cetera, et cetera, Venezuela, Zimbabwe, all these guys. Well, here we go. Another fiat currency on life support, basically failing, taking the savings of millions and millions of regular Turkish people down the toilet. Destroying businesses, import-export businesses, and um, just businesses that are having a hard time trying to pay their staff, all this kind of stuff. Destroy, destroying livelihoods. You know, people who are no longer able to uh, afford to feed their families and stuff because the price of goods is going up so much faster than their wages are going up, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Inflation's no joke, guys. Inflation's some scary, scary stuff when you see it happening at these kind of rates. And it just keeps getting worse. The Turkish lira has been uh, one of the premier examples of like, ah, crypto, uh, ah, fiat currency, not cryptocurrency, over the last um, few years. And it just keeps getting worse, man. It just keeps getting worse. You know, whether it is the runaway inflation in Turkey or the runaway inflation in Lebanon or the capital controls or whatever you might see, the runaway inflation in the United States, 6.2% or something was it uh, last month? That's not good, man. That's not good. That means that every 11 years, your savings are cut in half. Those are crushing rates of inflation. Not good. No bueno. So it's everywhere. It's happening everywhere. Some countries are getting hit worse than others, depending on the levels of, you know, corruption and all that stuff of the local political class. But it's happening everywhere. It's happening everywhere. 
here's the reality. You cannot fix the problems caused by money printing by printing more money. And that's what most of these central banks try to do. Print more money to solve the problems caused by money printing. It's just not working. Opt out, buy Bitcoin. It's so obvious. Any Turk who had bought Bitcoin at any time, at any time in history, is up so dramatically. They've protected their family's wealth in the face of a fiat currency that has just gone down the toilet. Opt out by Bitcoin. Don't know how many times I gotta say it, but man, you gotta have some BTC, man. Holy cow. Holy cow. It is the, it is the inflation hedge. Look at this insanity going on out there in the world. Final story for today. The El Salvadoran ambassador to the United States basically came out and said, yo, America, what's up, man? <laughs> Bitcoin, it's here to challenge your authority. We're not backing down on Bitcoin and that other countries are going to follow our leadership. And it's all true. It's very, very true. There's a reason why the IMF, right, the International Mafia Fund, uh, why the IMF, this massive global financial body, keeps hitting El Salvador over the Bitcoin thing because it's challenging the dollar. Little tiny El Salvador has challenged the dollar. That's why the U.S. State Department has, you know, issued all kinds of strongly worded letters to El Salvador saying, well, we don't like that Bitcoin thing. El Salvador is a big deal from a little country because it was the shot heard around the world for all those countries out there that are suffering. Um, maybe they don't even have their own currencies. Countries like El Salvador didn't. They're using the U.S. dollar. Other countries do as well. We see uh, like Ecuador, uh, Panama, other countries also not even using currencies that they control. They're using other countries' currencies, which is mind-boggling to another level. And what about all the countries just have horrific currencies that, you know, the inflation problems and all this kind of stuff. Bitcoin is here for all of those. Bitcoin is the quiet financial revolution, which is quickly becoming a louder financial revolution as we see more and more adoption happening from some very interesting players all around the world. Central bank digital currencies are not the answer. They are not the, the desired future of humanity. All it does is make it easier for governments to implement some kind of two-tiered system for society. We have like almost like a Chinese social credit kind of system where you're not allowed to do certain things. Certain behaviors or things you say online will mean that you're not allowed to buy certain things or go certain places or stay in certain hotels or travel on airlines or any of that kind of stuff. That's what CBDCs do. They are a control mechanism for governments. Opt out of the insanity buy Bitcoin. And I hope, of course, we see more countries taking the El Salvador route and adopting Bitcoin at a very, very serious level. Anyway, your question for today, do you think that this new bill being proposed in India is actually going to have any kind of impact on the market or is it all going to be a big fat nothing burger? Let me know your opinion down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.